In this video, I'm going to walk through how to set up your PayPal journal, accept payments with PayPal, and then reconcile all of your payments from your PayPal account, and then transfer that money into your bank account. So as we know, PayPal is just like a bank in the sense that it holds money, um, it collects money, but you can have a balance in your PayPal account. So we're going to walk through the scenario. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we have our PayPal payment acquirer set up. To do that, you want to go to your payment acquirers and you can go in accounting, go to payments, payment acquirers and install and enable PayPal. I've already done that. You're going to want to get your email, merchant ID, your token. And right now we have it in test mode and these are all test credentials. So once you set up your PayPal account, and keep in mind this could work for Stripe or Authorize.net, it's a very similar concept. So once we have our PayPal set up, it's going to ask us for a journal, so a payment journal, which we created. So if you go to Configurations Journals, we have our PayPal journal below. And we have our bank account, which we created in our chart of accounts. So this is simply, if we click into this bank, let's actually remove that. We created a new bank account, 101605, and this is our PayPal account with type bank and cash. We have our bank suspense account, which we're using uh, the same bank suspense account for all of our banks right now. You can create a custom one if you want to. We set an account number, and this is just to allow us to transfer money between our bank accounts easily. For our incoming and outgoing payments, we have our PayPal payment method. We did not set up outstanding receipts accounts or outstanding payments accounts. You can set these up if you'd like. Right now, I'm using a, the same one for all of my bank accounts. You probably may want to separate them so you can have um, a good view of what's in your outstanding payments and receipts for each one of your bank uh, type accounts. For the purpose of this demo, I just left it as the default that is set on our configurations, which I'll show you in a second. So now we have our bank journal set up. I'm going to go to settings and we're going to look at our default accounts. Down here, you see our default receipts and payments account. If we open these up, these are just current assets and they hold our money. They're just like on deposited funds um, in other accounting software. All right, so now we have our journal set up. In another video, I covered how to collect online payments um, with PayPal. So I'll just quickly walk through a payment that we're going to accept. So I'll just create a new sales order for customer one. We'll sell them product two. And we will send by email. So we're going to send the customer a payment link. As you see on the right, this got sent to the customer. So I'm just going to open up that email and I'm going to pay. We can review, accept and pay this quote. So I'll click accept and pay using PayPal and click pay. So we want to do and again, these are all just test credentials here. I'm going to use a test account and I'm going to click pay now. So once you go through this process that your customers will go through, this is just to show you the entire flow. This will become a confirmed sales order and an invoice is automatically created because I have those settings selected and I'll show you what that is in a second. I've went over this in more detail in another video. So now you see this is a confirmed sales order. An invoice was created for this automatically and we have a payment transaction attached to this and this payment transaction links to our PayPal um, payment. So we have our sales order 20, which is the reference um, we have our acquirer reference, the acquirer is PayPal, the amount, and we see that we have in these smart buttons, a sales order and an invoice that links these together. 
or essentially a, we paid that sales order. So it's attached to a, uh, a sales order and it references this invoice as well. So now if we go to our settings page, we'll see how we automatically created that invoice. So we'll search invoice and you see under sales, automatic invoice, generate the invoice automatically when the online payment is confirmed. That way we don't have to manually create a invoice for our sales orders. And we also have um, online payments enabled, which is right here, online payments, request an online payment to confirm your orders. And that's how we were able to select, to allow customers to pay with PayPal. All right, so now going over to our PayPal account, you're gonna go, want to go into your reports and download your statement each month. So you can do this daily, weekly, monthly, whatever you'd like. You're going to want to customize your report in order to find the, the subject. So we have some of our transactions details that will um, be downloaded for each of our transactions. You don't need all of these. Um, I'll show you what we boiled this down to. I have some pay, pay flow details which is the invoice number, um, the customer reference number, and any comments and, and pay flow transaction. And the reason why we want all this is because this is how we can easily connect it to Odoo. So now I'm going to open up, uh, once we download this, we're going to manipulate the data. I've already done that for the sake of time. Essentially what we want is our gross and our subject, as well as our fees. So we have four transactions and if we go into our accounting app and we look at our PayPal journal, you see we have an out in our outstanding payments and receipts account, we have $80. And if we click into this, we'll see this is for four different transactions. We have sales order 17-1, sales order 18, 19, 20. They were each for $20. And if we open up our numbers again, we see that we have, this should be 18. So sales order 18, 19, 20, sales order 17 dash one. And this is all matched up with this label here. So this subject, sorry, this subject exported from our transactions in PayPal will hold the sales order number that we're going to reconcile against. And the reason why this is important is so that we can easily match up our open sales orders or, or, or things that need to be reconciled with these lines here with minimal effort. So now that we have all of our outstanding receipts and they all match what was downloaded from PayPal, we can go ahead and create a manual bank statement to match all these transactions. And again, you can do this daily, weekly, monthly, whatever you prefer. Before I do that, I do wanna show you that we can automate this process a little bit quicker by creating a reconciliation model. So if we go to configurations, we have reconciliation models. I created one for PayPal transactions and it essentially is for our PayPal journal, anything that was paid or received, we're going to match it with an invoice or bill with the label. So it's going to look at the label that we import into Odoo, which is right now it's going to be this subject. So you can relabel this or just import it to, to, sub, to label. Um, so we'll just name it label. So really what we need is the label and the amount. So it's going to automatically see that this is, you know, sales order 18 and match up the payment with the invoice that's reconcilable inside of Odoo. And there's the settings again, we have match invoice with label and you can do more complex matching if you'd like, you can use regular expressions. Um, you know, this is a very helpful tool and I'll show you what that does. So now what we want to do is import that bank statement. Before we do that, let's go back to our numbers. There's something that we need to consider here is that we received 20, but the fee was $1.19, but the easiest way I think to do this, and there may be better ways out there, is just to create a new line for all of your PayPal fees and sum them up. Because your customer did pay $20, but PayPal took these fees, fees away. So we don't want to deduct it from what the customer was paying. So I'm just going to add a new line here. And we can say this is 
PayPal fees. And we're just going to do the sum. Let me say USD. So now we have the sum here of all of our PayPal fees. So we don't really need this column anymore. We can delete it if we'd like. We'll delete it just to keep things simple. So we have our gross revenue, um, our label, currency, date. So we'll save this. This is file download six. We'll actually export this to a CSV so we can import it into Odoo. And now we can import that. Before we import it, let's create one manually just to see. We're going to import the date, the label, and the amount. So this is going to be date, label, and the gross is going to be the amount. So we'll now import this. So we have date. We're going to ignore this. This is going to be the amount. And we'll test this transaction. Everything looks good, so we can import this. Okay, so now we have our net balance, 7524. We'll update our ending balance here. So this is maybe for the, we can write the date here. We'll just say PayPal 0204, 2022. And before we post this, we want to consider what we're going to do with this PayPal fee. And there's many ways to handle this. You can manually reconcile this PayPal fee. You can create a reconciliation model to automatically handle this PayPal fee when it says PayPal fees, automatically put into a specific account. Um, so we created a chart of account that's going to be PayPal fees, and you can have this at any account that you want. So we're just keeping track of it in an expense account called PayPal fees. So one way to handle our PayPal fees is to create a vendor bill. So we'll create a new vendor bill. We're going to pay PayPal and we're just going to add a line here that says PayPal fees. And we'll change this account. As you can see, it got automatically set for the PayPal fees and we're going to do 476. We're going to say it's today. We're going to confirm this. And we can register the payment from our PayPal account. And now this is in payment. So this will allow us to reconcile our PayPal fees um, on our PayPal journal when we import our banks or our PayPal statement. As you can see, it's going from accounts payable to PayPal fees. And now we can go ahead and continue that process. And now when we go to our bank statement that we created, we can now click, we can post it and reconcile this amount. And as you see, all of this was automatically matched up. PayPal fees here matching up with PayPal fees, sales order 20 matching up with sales order 20, 19 with 19, 18 with 18, and 17 one with 17 one. So this is all matched up. There is another step here where you can automatically reconcile and validate these, but I think it's helpful to review and make sure there was no mistakes. So we'll just validate all of these. And we can close our statement. Now, if we go to our profit and loss, you can see our expense account, PayPal fees has the 476. And the last thing we want to do um, is transfer that money to our bank account. So I made a couple adjustments to this PayPal account, but now our total balance in the GL is 7048, and that would be our balance that's currently in our PayPal account. So PayPal is holding that 7048, but there's going to come a time where you want to transfer that money into your actual bank account. And then when you download the lines from PayPal, there's going to be a negative transaction for 7048 money coming out of PayPal, and that's going to be going to your bank account. So in order to do this, 
we want to create an internal transfer. So we're going to select internal transfers. So double check that amount. So 7048, we're sending 7048 from our PayPal to our bank. We're going to say PayPal deposit. Oh, can't spell today. All right. So we'll save and we'll confirm. Now, all this is doing is creating items that we can reconcile against. So when our statement comes in, we have money coming out of our PayPal account and money coming into our bank account. So you would handle that process just as I did earlier. Uh, your statement lines would come in and one of the lines would say minus 7048. So we can just show that by creating a manual example here. We're going to do minus 7048 transfer to bank. And we'll post this. So I had to update this ending balance here, post and reconcile. And as you see, we have that PayPal deposit right here. So we can validate this. And on the receiving end from your bank account, when your bank statement comes in, you're going to be receiving this money into your bank account. So to do that, I'm going to create another statement and I'm going to receive 7048. So we'll say 7048. PayPal transfer, and we'll post this, reconcile, and as you see our 7048 here. So now our PayPal balance is empty, so we have no balance in our GL, and it would be, we've increased our bank account balance. So that's how you can manage all of your PayPal. Um, this was a long process, but keep in mind you do this monthly or weekly um, and a lot of it is automated once you get used to it. You just have to, just to recap, we're going to accept payments from our customers using PayPal. We're going to import our PayPal statement um, at any interval you'd like. And then we're going to use that to reconcile and we're going to have that uh, reconciliation models automatically detect all of our sales order and match them up with that one line for fees. And we're going to create a vendor bill for fees, and then we'll transfer our money eventually into our bank account.